Welcome to Dunafold Var Hungary. I'm the CEO of Energy Integration Inc., Bill Schaefer, and I'm here in Dunafold Var for the commissioning of our first two commercial systems with Pannonia Bio at their plant very near the town of Dunafold Var. Pannonia Bio, in installing these systems, is leading in electrification and decarbonization of biorefining. They're electrifying, decarbonizing, and saving energy. Their goals are first to expand production. The original plant is a 53 million gallon per year nameplate ICM Fagan design, which began production in 2012. A McGann design plant doubled that capacity and began production in 2015. They've been de-bottlenecking and expanding their production capacity from the original nameplate 106 million gallons per year up to 132 million gallons per year and to the current 150 million gallons per year. Additionally, their goal has been to produce new products and convert from a dry mill corn ethanol plant to a multi-product biorefinery. To accomplish this successfully, it's necessary to manage process energy requirements. A little bit about Pannonia Bio. This is a picture of the Dunafold Bar biorefinery just mentioned. Mark Turley, the founder, first became interested in the renewables market in 2008 and founded Ethanol Europe in 2009 to develop biorefineries. In 2010, construction of the first biorefinery, the ICM Fagan design began with first production in 2012. This plant was expanded and then expanded again when the McGann plant was constructed and uh, capacity was effectively doubled. It's currently the largest renewable ethanol biorefinery in Europe. We first met Ethanol Europe at FEW 2017 in Minneapolis. Mark Turley, the founder of Ethanol Europe, Fergus Murphy, his director of technology, and Michael Healy met with myself and Lynn Crawford, our chief technical officer at our booth in the conference. They were intrigued with our value proposition, under which heat that's currently lost to the cooling towers is returned to the process through the use of industrial heat pumps. And this example, based on a 100 million gallon per year ICM design plant, we take process vapors at six pounds per square inch and 136 degrees F that currently go to a condenser that's cooled by the cooling towers where the vapors are condensed into high proof alcohol and sent to dehydration and then to final product. We grab those vapors before the condenser and redirect them to a heat pump. This heat pump upgrades the vapors, raising the pressure from six to 30 PSI and the temperature from 136 to 207 degrees Fahrenheit and we put it into a reboiler in this example. The reboiler condenses those vapors and sends them to dehydration and then to product storage. At the same time, water in the reboiler is converted into steam and the energy is returned to the process. In this example, the 32 megawatts previously lost to the cooling towers through the application of four megawatts of heat pump energy returns 28 megawatts of energy to the process. So we joined forces and Lynn and I were off to Budapest. Budapest is a beautiful city. I encourage anyone to, uh, to, if they have the opportunity to visit, this is a picture of the parliament building. And this is a picture of Ronald Reagan. A statue of Ronald Reagan is in Budapest in recognition of his role in ending the Cold War and the influence of the Soviet Union over Hungary. Lynn and I arrived in Budapest just in time for a festival and got to spend actually a day before we got to work uh, enjoying the city. Then we were off to Dunafoldvar. 
in our process, we begin by establishing a process flow diagram from current plant operating data. From this, we derive a baseline mass energy balance for the plant and then develop a preliminary design. Each of these steps is reviewed and approved by plant engineering or engineering group uh, under contract to the plant. Following the engineering review and approval of the preliminary design, we go out for budget quality bids for the major equipment and do an estimate of capex, opex, and economic feasibility of the system, which is presented to management and finance for review and approval. At that point, given approval, the customer does due diligence to confirm all of our claims, and then ideally, we have project approval, management review and approval, and notice to proceed. So, is this for real? How do we do the due diligence? Well, in the case of Pannonia Bio, it began with third party reviews. This is a picture of Graeme Hansen. Graeme has decades of experience with mechanical vapor recompression in a variety of industries and is responsible for a much smaller mechanical vapor recompression system installed in the McGann uh, evaporation system. As well, internal engineering reviews confirm our assumptions and that we've got all of our baseline data correct. And that was followed in this case by a visit to an operating site that had operated successfully for some time with a very similar system. Sunteco is a joint venture partner of Pillar, the provider of the blowers for the system. And we visited a site uh, owned by Kumo Petrochem in Yosu, South Korea, that has eight blowers in a very similar configuration. It's operated successfully for quite some time. So at this point, we had a notice to proceed. The project scope, schedule, and budget were all firmed up and approved, and an EPCM firm was selected. Kremsmuller, the EPCM that was selected out of Austria, is a major international engineering firm, and they provided a performance wrap of guarantees. Detailed engineering then was performed in collaboration with Pannonia Bio, under which the PNIDs and the general arrangement were all finalized, and long lead time equipment orders were placed. Pillar, uh, previously mentioned in the site visit to Yosu, South Korea, provide the centrifugal blowers, and Kremsmuller did the design and construction of the heat exchangers in the system. So what are some of the milestones and challenges we faced? Well, the blowers were delivered in November 2019 on schedule, but COVID-19 locked down subcontractors in March of 2020 and threw a significant delay into the whole schedule. On top of that, Kremsmuller announced that the division with the EPCM contract with Pannonia Bio was entering insolvency in June of 2020. This meant Pannonia Bio was in the driver's seat as of July, and from that time, we've proceeded to the current state. What's the layout of the project? Well, here we see a plan view which shows the overall configuration of the blowers. In this, you'll notice over to the right where my pointer is, that's the rectifier. Currently, this duct goes down to the vacuum condenser. Now we've added a big valve and a duct that diverts those vapors over into our first blower. These blowers are in a herringbone pattern in this case. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and an eighth. The important thing to note here is on the seventh blower, those vapors are split with part of them going to the eighth blower and another split going to the reboiler right here. So the eighth blower actually upgrades the vapors to the point where they can go straight into dehydration. The reboiler produces steam, which drives other processes. 
in this diagram, you can also see the, the ICM distillation system on the left side of your screen with the, with the uh, rectifier at the right here, it feeds down onto another deck below this deck where the ICM system in a similar configuration takes vapors from left to right and exits out the other end and then into dehydration. So we've got the, the McGann rectifier on the right, the ICM rectifier on the left. Two decks, McGann on the top, ICM on the second deck. Here's a 3D view of the same systems. And you can see here clearly the two decks, the top deck being the McGann deck, the bottom deck being the ICM deck. And you can see as well the diversions, the ducts coming off of the, off of the rectifiers on the left, ICM, right McGann. This is an overall view of the layout of the plant. So the yellow rectangle you see in the center is the system location. We've got the, uh, those three little, little circles on, on the bottom here are, that's the, those are the ICM distillation columns and the McGann are on the other end. One of the unique things about this system and one of the things that we push as a company is the integration of MVR into multiple processes to optimize and, get, and allow recovery of a much greater amount of energy than, than a single system such as an evaporation MVR. So here you see a picture of the installation of the ICM rectifier feed. The crane is lifting in the duct which is connecting to this blind flange at the top of the rectifier on the ICM side. And now on the right, you see the McGann system with the rectifier, this horizontal duct coming down. Then as you can see, feeds through this, uh, this sound deadening wall into the first fan on the McGann deck, the upper deck. The steam from these systems, from the reboilers are fed into the evaporators and the side stripper as well as the dehydration fan feeding into the mole sieves. Um, the side stripper, if you look up here, this, this small dark duct comes off of actually the same duct you see on your left. It goes into the evaporators feeding the side strippers. The system control and data acquisition system for the project is shown in this slide. And you can see the seven fans that upgrade the vapors from the top of the rectifier to the reboiler, and then with a split going to this eighth fan, which then feeds the dehydration system. So where are we? Installation is complete. The commissioning will be complete in September. We're in the process of completing that at the moment and we expect operations to begin in October. The expected benefits from the system include a 47% reduction in total plant thermal energy requirements on the ICM side, as well as a 32% reduction in total plant thermal energy requirements for the McGann system. So these are major savings in energy, cooling, and steam generation. Besides the direct savings in energy, the huge reduction in cooling tower requirements and steam generation requirements save a tremendous amount of money as well. So thank you again. I'm going to continue with description of this system for electrifying, decarbonizing, and saving energy. Here are a couple of slides that I've done. These were taken with a drone and I will now move into a short presentation from with drone video, which will give you, I think, an even better idea of the system and its configuration.
you see these two doors. The upper door is the door to the McGann deck, the lower to the ICM deck. So I got, this is an earlier video, so we still got scaffolding when we're, from when we were uh, working on the supports and all of that for the duct work. If we zoom in now, you can see the layout of the eight fans taking the rectifier vapors off the top of the McGann system and upgrading them. Now you can see the reboiler at the end, which takes one split off the seventh, seventh fan. And the other right here that goes over to the mole sieves on the other side of this wall. You can also see, this is the top of the ICM rectifier and you can see the split that comes off and then goes down to the lower deck and begins feeding the number one fan for the ICM system just below this deck. You may notice all these birds flying by the drone. They seem to have been, uh, the pigeons at the plant seem to have been fascinated by the drone. <laughs> Here's a better shot of the reboiler. This area I'm pointing to now is where all the molecular sieves sit down in the dehydration system. This duct feeds the evaporators with steam from our reboilers. You can see the vacuum condenser down below. Uh, that, of course, will have very light duty because most of the vapors that previously were condensed in the, in the vacuum condenser now uh, go into the number one fan and get upgraded for reuse. It's another good view of the, of the eight fans. Finally, this is a good view of the ICM evaporators. Thank you again for your attention.